spoke to Ricky and his friend Glyn about art. I just don't get it. Ricky had some odd pictures on his walls. I don't have any pictures up in my flat because of the mirrored wall. <laughs> but I can't say I'm bothered. The mirrored wall, we should just explain what that is. When you moved into your flat, there was an enormous mirror on one wall, was that right? We just got this flat and, uh, you know, it's not a big flat, so I think the people who had it before us, he, he was a gay fella, right, which was a bit like, oh, so you've been doing with that mirror and that. But <laughs> that, that was <laughs> <laughs> What? No, just, you so, know. Just, what? What? what has he been doing with the mirror? Well, what's he been doing? Why, 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 no, what? it's just because they're quite sort of experimental in it, aren't they? And I don't know. What do you mean? What do they do? Well, I wouldn't know anything about it, but go no, on. No, what do you want? What? No, I don't. Experimental what do in mean, what way? What do you mean experimental? I just mean, you know, they'd be doing stuff. What? What? Of whatever they do. Chemistry. What? Have a chemistry set out. They'd be doing experiments. What? No, just doing what? Singing I am what I am and just checking out their, no, their dance their moves. Own. I'm not having a go at anyone, but what? I'm just saying like they're doing what they're doing. Uh, which Carl, you're not annoyed as well, yeah? No, I'm not. I'm not. This is what, why, well, what, why are you worried about what a little gay fella was doing in your flat before you got it in the front of a mirror? I wasn't worried about it. Why I mean, are you thinking about what he's doing? Why are you fantasizing what a little gay fella was doing in front of your mirror in your- I'm not, I'm not bothered. I'm just telling you what, why it was a bit odd that he had a mirror in there, right? But forget the, the history. But you've got a mirror in there now, haven't you? No, because what I did was, I try. I was gonna take it down and I thought, oh, it's a bit dangerous. This, yeah. you know, it could crack and- Cause it's the size me. of the whole wall, isn't it? It, it, it took up a whole wall. Right. right. So like when he's moving about everywhere, he's got a good view of it and that. But he's got this full wall of mirror, and I thought I can't take that down. <laughs> and uh, I thought, what what can I do? So I've just put wallpaper on it. Brilliant. And it looks all right. You you wouldn't know what have you? But it means that I can't put any pictures up. That's that's all. That's all I'm saying. Because if I put a nail in. And it, what don't you understand about art? What about art don't you understand? The concept, specifics. Just, um, the way some people like, you know, the ones you've got where it's just like a block of colour on a bit of canvas. It's like, what's, what's that? Just abstract. It's just abstract. It's, it's, you know, it's a vibrancy of colour. It's a, you know, an attack on the senses. Or it could be, there could be something in there that you might see. You might not see first time round or it could be, you know. Yeah, but there's loads of stuff to look at without having to do that. But you've that's got windows. I can understand if you had a cell and there's no windows and you want a bit of colour. But you've got oh, a window yeah. to look out of and, and you've got like just a big block of But I was explaining this to you, that the, 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 the photograph where people before, um, you know, the art was photography, it was realistic, it was realistic and uh, you know, they had to make it look like the subject but then when cameras came in that's when people started yeah, doing I, surreal stuff and- I understand they, they, that. They, otherwise uh, there was no point to it, they had to find a new way to represent things that f uh, photography couldn't do as such. No, so I, I, that's that's like when we when we were in London having a shop around at Christmas and there was that picture of fruit for seven hundred quid. <laughs> like, well, just get some fruit. You know what I mean? You can get some real fruit for three quid. Yeah. I understand that, but there's nothing wrong with like having a. We'll, we'll get. Don't don't invent cameras then. One or the other. Do you know what I mean? That's <laughs> what annoys me. Someone invents something, and then they go, "We've got to invent something else." Like the abstract thing. Why has someone gone? Oh, I can't have paintings anymore because. Was it a Dali? Going melting clocks and stuff. No? I mean, the first one was all right when he did the first clock, but then all the time he's just like, oh, I'll draw something and it's got a melting clock on it. Mm. I'll do a sheep, put put one of them on it. Put, Have put you seen his lobster telephone? That annoys me. Why? Because he's he's just he's not he's not. I mean, what I think what annoyed me more with that is when he heard about how it happened. Um, he had some artist mate round, mm. right? And, um, I don't know what happened, uh, they, oh, were okay. they were eating- That's a hell of an anecdote. No, no, but they were eating. They were eating some yeah. food and what have you. Yeah. Lobsters? And, uh, yeah, they, they were eating lobster. Oh, right. And, uh- That's Andy. I don't know, the other artist, whoever it was, sort Telephone. of- Started saying, oh, you and your clocks and all that, right? Brilliant. And, um, they this started, didn't happen. They yeah. started arguing. Yeah. And he chucked some of the lobster. Bollocks. And it landed it, on it the phone. It bounced off his mate's head. <laughs> Went on the phone and they both looked at each other like, are you thinking what I'm thinking? And they, they, they brought out that phone as a bit of art. Things like that annoy me. Didn't because happen. it was them just messing about. That didn't happen. Just telling you what I know. I saw his, his work. Each to their own, if that's what he's doing. I'm just saying, I'm not putting my stamp of approval on it. <laughs> <laughs> Heaven forbid. <laughs> well, um, you know, as you mentioned in your diary, your favourite artist is Lowry, because you can look at them for ages and see someone different every time you look at it. All I'm saying is, art should be there to tell a story, not just to have a splash of colour. We know colours out there, there's loads of colour. We don't need to be reminded of it. 
<laughs> but colour's part of our evolution, and so it does something to us. Just Only like sounds, just like sounds. Yeah, but I'm saying do a picture. Smells. Colour it in. Still use the colours, but mm. draw something with it rather than just going, bit of yellow, bit of red. Like that when you've got just red and black. What, what, what's that meant to do? Well, it does something. What? Well, I like it, I enjoy it, so it does oh, something. Yeah, you, you have it then. I'm just saying, I'd, I prefer it if it was something. And so, so you, uh, what, let me just get this right, you had a mirror on one wall, so you, you padded that wall. It's just and sort you of- padded the just, others. Uh, it's just sort of, uh, wallpaper on it. Right. Amazing. And there's no other art in there, not it's just an empty cell. Was Suzanne wife <laughs> like some art? Just like, uh, it's a, Suzanne's not allowed to watch telly unless it's a favourite thing, otherwise she's gotta to talk to me <laughs> about stuff. There's no art, there's no point, just wallpaper. I'm just saying we've got three three windows we can look out of. Right. Right? Stop looking at the walls, look out the window. <laughs> <laughs> Some new words have been introduced into the dictionary. Too many words. <laughs> We should have some system where we can get rid of words if they aren't used a certain number of times. Well, the, the, we do. They do die out, don't they, eventually? Like what? You don't have to use them. No, but they don't, do they? They keep adding them. And I just worry about, uh, you know, th this is the problem with, like, your head can only hold so much, can't it? Yeah. It all very well when Adam and Eve was knocking about. There's no history, they don't have to remember anything. <laughs> All I'm saying is, fine, bring out a new word, but once you bring out a new one, bin another one. The dictionary is getting bigger and bigger. No one's keeping an eye on it. <laughs> well, I think they are. They're not. They just they keep adding. It doesn't grow. It, they don't just dig it up one day. So, it's got bigger. What have you done? So you're Left happy, it out. You're happy for them to stick in iPod, let's say. But you we know. can pride ourselves on having more words in English language than any other language. I think we've got twice as many as the second. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I think maybe Russian. I'm, I'm not sure about that. Someone, I'm sure someone emailed us, but but we don't it's... talk the most, so there's a lot of clutter there. <laughs> what do you mean we don't talk the most? Well, you'd you'd have to you'd, you'd Nothing say that. Nothing is expressive as the English language. Yeah, no, because we've got a word for everything. I just I'm I'm just saying that's that I don't use all these all these words that are coming out, and I just think, like I say, keep an eye on it. Some sort of I don't know how it can be controlled. But Shakespeare invented words. I think Shakespeare invented about twelve hundred words. Yeah, and we're probably still using a lot of his. So why yeah. don't we keep sticking more in the pot? Right. Stop using loads of words. People are panicking in New York about the snow they're getting. It's two foot deep. They are saying it's to do with global warming. I don't get it. Two days ago they were saying the world's getting warmer and the ice is melting on one of the poles where the polar bears are. As long as we get snow on the world, does it matter where it goes? Read on the internet that heads are bigger now than they were years ago. Brains are getting bigger, apparently. This is because we're being told too much information. <laughs> we are told like too much sweating. stuff about things that we wouldn't have known about years ago. You've just made that leap, haven't you? Presume maybe br heads and brains are getting larger, but the fact that it's because there's too much information cramming in them. Where well, have you it got is that from? As, as time goes on, isn't it? It's that thing of um, we're being taught more and more every day. As the time goes on. Something's happening every day. You've got to remember that. No, you haven't. You have. It's the same, like I said, you know, with the Adam and Eve thing. They didn't have that much to remember. They come on the world, they go, what happened yesterday? Oh, not, not much, uh... <laughs> <laughs>
You, sometimes we put I, food I, down for it, and yeah. sometimes it gets uh, uh, on our lap and we stroke it. You don't what, just stroke it. We're you not massage it. it. You massage it's back. You go, no, are you stressed out? Well, no, no it's out? good. It's, no, no, I'm not saying you stressed out. At no point did I say you stressed out. You <laughs> said, what the fuck are you doing for? Is it stressed out or something? I, 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 I like uh, touching my cat. To be honest with you, I don't like Ricky's cat. Oh, it, I can't believe it! Because it, this. every time I go around there, it goes straight for Magoolies. <laughs> yeah, instantly. You, yeah, he'd probably seen you in the sea and thought, <laughs> well, if he's waving it about, I'll have a bit of that. But it's like the lizard thing you've got. It's kind of, it's just sat there. You've bought it a big box, right, to be in. Right. One, one it's one. a salamander, right. so it's an amphibian. Yeah. It's not a box. It's a big vivarium. Yeah. But what I'm saying. And is as it for, and, and, and and if you're going to criticise someone for just sitting there uh, having a round head and doing nothing with its life, uh, people who live in glass houses. No, we've done this do one. You know, do you know what gets me though, right, Steve? When I was there, I was looking at it and I thought, is it dead? Right? Because he's just sat there. Like, <laughs> and then it was thinking exactly <laughs> the same fucking <laughs> it's thing. Sat there, not moving. Right. And then, on the top of the box, is like a box full of crickets and stuff. <laughs> That's- it- it's- it's- it's food. Yeah. Right? But they were more active than the thing that it was gonna feed. <laughs> Get rid of the lizards, <laughs> keep them in there. More entertaining. <laughs> Don't understand it. A few months back, a girl who was having a kid showed me one of them scans of the kid that was in her. That's science gone mad, innit? I couldn't think of anything nice to say, as it looked like a frog. <laughs> Do you know why we've got to that point? <laughs> what? Why- why have we got to see something that- that young? Why- Because people can keep an eye on the progress of the baby in the womb. Yeah, but why are they printing it out and stuff? That's some- surely that's for a doctor to see. Well, that's just an added bonus for people who are interested in such things. Well, that's like saying, why do you take pictures of anything? No, because normally pictures are like, you know, you on- in Brazil, sat in the sea or whatever. You'd go, oh yeah, I remember that day, it was a good day or whatever. But wasn't. It's just kind of like, why have you got to see something? It's, you might as well. Well, go you to just, the you next just listen. Why have you got to see something that small? So why would you take a picture of Steve in the sea? No, but what what I mean is, why? At what point are we going to stop? Are we going to start sort of X-raying the fella's testicles and saying, well, there it is at a really young age? <laughs> Well, <laughs> where, where, where are we gonna stop? It's because- it's just horses for courses, isn't it? Some people like to have a record of their baby in the womb. They That's like right. to show the baby. They're they excited sit, about it. They All sit right, down yeah. and they- they show the friends the- the slideshow. There that's the birth. Oh, that's the conception. Oh, look, Ron's going a bit mad there, isn't he? But why do I need to see this? This is what I'm saying, it was an awkward situation because she was happy with it. I was like, oh god. <laughs> you know what I mean? It was an odd looking thing. I couldn't say, oh, it looks like you, because that would be a diss. <laughs> <laughs> oh Christ! Met Suzanne at Euston Station. I said I would sort out the tea tonight, so I called the curry house. The fella couldn't understand me. I asked for two poppadoms. He kept saying, how many? I kept saying two. He still couldn't understand. I said, one more than one. He understood. <laughs> when we picked up the food and took it home, there were five poppadoms in the bag. There is a restaurant somewhere that sells knobs to eat. No, there's not. There is. No, there's not. No, there is. It says that women can't eat too many of them, and if you want a seal's knob for dinner, you have to book in advance. Right, it's gobbledygook. <laughs> this is the ramblings of a madman again. It's a trend, he writes. It won't last long. It'll be like hummus. <laughs> <laughs> but hummus, what, what, when did that happen? What do you mean? It's still going. It's a Greek traditional food. I know, but there's one down the- there's a restaurant down the road that that's all they do. That isn't a proper meal. That's a side order, isn't it? That's like having a restaurant just flogging tomato ketchup. <laughs> hummus isn't a meal. They don't even try and kid you and get you in and flog you just hummus. They actually say it's hummus today. <laughs> Not gonna work. We shut down within a month. <laughs> Called Ricky and asked what the difference is between the mind and the brain. Yeah, he <laughs> That's a hell of a phone yeah, call Yeah, unbelievable. <laughs> unbelievable. Ricky did explain, but I can't remember what he said. I wondered at what age you are when the mind kicks in. Okay. Ricky changed the subject and said there is an island called Spider Island. There's nothing but spiders on it. A bloke went to visit the island and said there was a thousand types of spider in one tree. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't tell you that. No, I looked it up after talking to you. Oh, right. Is that true? Um, yeah, they just said there's, there's loads of them. What, what do you think about that? What do you think of an island that's just full of spiders? It's a, it's a bit, it's a bit daft, isn't it? What do you think they should do then? Um, 
I don't know, because y you need spiders. I, I, I don't know what they do, but they say a world without spiders, like, wouldn't- wouldn't be good. Who says that? I don't know, someone. But- but they sort of do- they do something, there's something about if you did get rid of them all, it would have an effect. Well, of course it would. Any- get rid of anything, it would have an effect. Mm, not- not everything, though. <laughs> like I've said, you know, jellyfish and what have you. Well, it, no. The world wouldn't change. Well, it would. No, it wouldn't. Well, it would, because it's part of an ecosystem, so they're- they're- they're, they're something's food, aren't they? No, but the- it's- it's 97% water, or something. Yeah. So, how much are they doing? Just g give them another 3%, make them water. <laughs> and that's, that's- that's more useful. <laughs> give them another 3% and make them water! <laughs> oh, God! The rain- the rain ain't stopped. The old woman with the bent neck- Now, we've not heard about the old woman with the bent neck Who's before, the old woman she's with a bent neck? character. This? Incredible. She's, um, she's really old. And she's got a bent neck, yeah, but tell us something else. I don't know what's up with her, but her head sort of comes out of here. No, it's radio. We can't- they can't see what it you're doing. It sort of comes out of a- of a chest. So from behind it looks like she hasn't got an head. <laughs> it's really weird, right? I mean, she's old and I don't know what's happened, just Suzanne said it's sad and her bones have sort of bent up or something, or maybe she carried something heavy when she was younger. On her head. And, you know, I, I don't know, it's sad and everything. Yeah. But she's just- she- she's wandering up and down the street, always looks fed up, but you can see her, you have to sort of bend down a little bit. Mm. But- our head's just- I thought- I thought I'd told you about- She finds thought. a lot of change. Yeah. I said, yeah. Well, as you write in the diary, the old woman with the bent neck is struggling in the weather. The rain must be running down her back. Don't know why she went out in this weather. Me back's doing me head in today. It does this every time the weather turns a bit grim. Ever since I tried to kick me height. <laughs> oh, I remember that. We've heard this before. Kicked me height and landed on me arse. <laughs> Was going to treat Suzanne to a trip to the pictures to see Breakback Mountain, but then remembered there is a program on about two-headed kid tonight. <laughs> <laughs> a band from the Conga have won the best newcomers in a Radio Three competition. They use pots and pans for instruments. It says that the Conga is a poor, sad place. So why do people do that happy dance at the end of parties called the Conga? Right. One <laughs> is the Congo. <laughs> There's no place called the Conga. <laughs> <laughs> they come from a place called the Congo. <laughs> where, where, where do you come from? Uh, Okie Koki. <laughs> <laughs> it's a terrible place that we don't know whether we put our left leg in or our right leg in. Uh, sometimes we shake it all about. No, we're but, not sure if we should. But um, <laughs> <laughs> Conga! <laughs> Fucking hell, you're such a. <laughs> Went into the gadget shop today. It's full of stuff that we don't need. Gadget used to be a good word that made you think of James Bond with all his gadgets. The best thing I could find in the shop was a clock that ran on potatoes. <laughs> we are definitely going backwards. <laughs> I agree. Well, what's the- who cares about that? A, a, you know, a little electrical impulse, so what? Had a night out with old schoolmate. Found out about more of the other lads I went to school with. One is living underground. <laughs> He's living underground, not like a mole. Do you yeah. mean he's got a basement, or do you mean he digs a hole every night? My mate went to visit him, and he said it's all. Like it had been raining really heavily, and that, and it's all the rain's running what in. What do you mean he went to visit him? He went down here. What's that? That's an hole in the ground. Yeah, come in. Come he, just, see. he just said, "Oh, come, come round to us," and he's, he's living underground. What do you mean he's living he, he, underground? He wanted to be in the army, but was turned away, and that's the closest thing you can sort of. How is that similar to the Oh, that's in exactly the army. like the army, yeah, yeah, where they teach you trades and, uh, you know, engineering know. and he's, flying. He's happy. he's happy down there. He said it was really muddy and what have you. He said he won't be going back to visit him. What's yeah. he got down there? Just, just stuff, just like a sleeping bag, a lamp. He that's dug, he, he's dug himself a subterranean cave. Near my old infant school, they knocked it down because it was like a wreck. You'd, you'd be in the class and you could lean <laughs> on the wall. Yeah, some And your would go through it and stuff. And um, they knocked it all down, and I think that's when he was at his most happy, this bloke. I believe this, though. I believe someone he went to school with now lives in a hole. <laughs> that doesn't <laughs> shock me. When the, the tales I've heard of horses in houses and big-headed kids with webbed hands and feet, uh, and, uh, you know, and him, um, I, I believe that someone he went to school with now lives in a hole. That isn't bizarre to me. That's to- that's <laughs> You spent to far too long with him if that- now you're just happy to accept. I totally accept that. I- I'd be surprised if I walked round uh, where he lived that there weren't more people living in holes. 
His dad wanted to throw his budgie on the fire. True. His budgie died, his dad said, let's throw it on the fire. I mean, his mum, what did your mum do when your budgie died? She just was worried about the other bird that was left, so she made it a bit of company by getting a rock, getting a feather off the dead budgie, sticking it on the rock, put, putting it in the cage. So, a, a man living in a hole <laughs> it's not is unusual. not that bizarre. Right, carry on. I read me science magazine. Some things I learnt from the science magazine. Number one, space is running out of space. We should stay out of the sea because shark attacks are up. Yeah. Probably four a year now. <laughs> well, he just says here, we should just stop going in the sea. Yeah. There's no need for it. Exactly. Why is there no need for going in the sea? Just because there isn't now, is there? We've got loads of land. So just, you know, one or the other. We walked out of the sea. Now, this is what I mean about going backwards. Getting back in it again. <laughs> we came from the sea originally. Now we're going back in it. Don't go in it. Unless you're in a boat. <laughs> <laughs> the rules! The rules! According <laughs> the to Carl Pilkington! The rules of Carl Pilkington. Oh, God! Did the podcast and then went for a walk round Manchester Square. Years ago, a woman lived round there who had a head like a pig. She was known as the Pig Woman of Manchester Square. That made me think if there were other pig-headed women knocking about London. Do you know what I mean? Why, why was she nicknamed that? Why not just the pig-headed woman? That suggests to me like there was loads of pig-headed women and that's the one of Manchester Square. <laughs> right. Well, no, it was more to do with identifying her, not amongst other pig of the women, but go, have you seen the pig woman of Manchester Square? I.e., go down there and see the pig woman, it's in Manchester Square. What happens if she's walked off from there, though, and you go, well, no, but I saw one on New Cavendish Street. <laughs> no, well, she'll, woman? she'll always come back if you rattle the feet. Watched <laughs> a film about Hitler. Didn't watch all of it as it was subtitled. Can't be doing with that. Asked Suzanne if cinemas are full of deaf people when they're showing subtitled films. She said, shh, I'm trying to watch it. I said, what do you mean, shh? It's subtitled, I can make as much noise as I want. Yeah. She's you, a lucky, lucky woman. <laughs> you must be a joy to watch a subtitled film. I mean, the concentration is, is, is up there already. I mean, uh, it, it is hard to concentrate. It's not as easy as when you're hearing it, because, mm. you, you know, you, you read things, but, you know, it's possible. If you had a, a buffoon going, I'm just going to sit here and make as much noise as I want, what's the point of that? <laughs> yeah. What is the point of that? I mean, it's possible, but why do, do that in a cinema? Just walk into a subtitled film and go, right, everybody? Let's all do the conga. Well, yeah, or during during ballet. You know, I mean, ballet, they're just dancing. You don't need to listen to the words. Just have yeah. a conversation. We're having our bathroom done. The bathroom man was round at nine this morning. We weren't allowed to use the shower because it all had to be bone dry before we could use his waterproof filler. Not that waterproof, then. <laughs> Went for a brew with Ricky. We talked about monkeys and how they are closer to humans than they are to apes and how bees will drink cider to get off their heads. Now and again there is a bee that lets the drinking get in the way of the work and other bees sting it to death. Blimey. Yeah, well, uh, uh, there are, there, there's bees, they love a drink, um, and, uh, they can, they can just, they, they will, uh, drink pure alcohol. They drink 100%, they drink ethanol. You know, I don't know why. They love getting off it and they fall down and they're drunk, right? A bee can take in the equivalent of like 20 litres of wine, right? But some bees get uh, addicted in the, in the same sort of percentage as human addiction, like 10% of bees, they can't get enough of it. They take uh, ethanol, they take cider apples and that. And then when they get back to the hive, they go in a bit pissed and they've got guard bees and they go, come on, we've all had a drink. Bounces. Yeah. They sort of are, right? And they push them away and they push them away again. Then the next time they go, right, I've had enough. And they give it a good hiding. And uh, Carl couldn't get over this. I saw his face, but I, I knew that he was thinking of that bee with sort of like eyes rolling around his head, a little bit belligerent with his jacket on backwards. Yeah. You know, and the bouncer going, come on, come on, son, we've all had a laugh, let's move away, <laughs> yeah. move away. You're not coming in, right? You're wearing trainers. Yeah, you know, you're wearing, you're wearing three pairs of trainers, <laughs> yeah, and uh, yeah. I, I'm, I'm sick of it, you know. But what I did find out, because I went, went home and went on the computer trying to find out about drunk bees knocking about, um, they're not actually meant to fly. It's only because well, they don't know. Fly. Well, no, but they're, they're, if, if they were told that you're not actually designed to fly, they, they wouldn't bother. No, th this is the, this is that thing that goes around, that aerodynamically, on the, f on the face of it, looking at the size of the wings and the, and the, and the body proportions and everything, that it, it's a surprise that they can fly, okay? It's not that, 
no one's ever told them they can't, and as soon as someone tells me <laughs> not meant to fly, they all fall out of the sky going, oh, what are we doing? Like in a cartoon. <laughs> no, but uh, it's, it's something about the confidence in that. At the moment, nobody's saying There's no to do with the confidence. There is no such thing as confidence in bees. A bee never loses its nerve. That's not why it drinks. Because what are you drinking for? I'm just not confident anymore. There's no point to turn to the bottle. I can't go up there again. You're an idiot. Suzanne said today can be my day because she has been a bit of a pain with her illness and that. <laughs> <laughs> so she said I can do what I want today. We went for a walk around Green Park. Loads of tourists were about looking at the Queen's house. She was in because the flag was up. I wouldn't want to live there. Why wouldn't you want to live there? Just because it's right in the centre of town. It's just not in a good place, is it? It's got a roundabout side and that. Really <laughs> busy. It's pretty good. I went for a pee in the toilets. When I came out, a pigeon had shat on Suzanne's coat. She was in a bit of a mood about it. A bird shot on my ear once. I left it for about ten to fifteen minutes until I got home. I washed it off and in that ten to fifteen minutes it had corroded me ear. You've, he's had a lot of problem with ears. Um, he told me the other day, he, uh, he got up, um, washed, had a bath, had some breakfast, went to the shops to get a newspaper and well, had a chat with a woman in the corner shop, got home, pottering around, looked in the mirror, he had a cotton bud sticking out of his ear. <laughs> he went, what annoyed me was, she didn't say anything. Like it's her responsibility. Yeah. No, but she knows me well enough to sort of, you know, <laughs> go, you know you've got a cotton bud in your ear. No, she knows you well enough to go, Carl's got a cotton bud in his ear, I've seen worse. <sighs> when you when you've got a cotton bud in your ear, what interrupted you? I, th I think you? Suzanne called or my dad called or something, and then because I was running a little bit late because I'd been talking to them, the earbud was in, I just popped my coat on and went to the shop. Carl, you got a toothbrush in your mouth. Oh. Walked through Covent Garden. There were five of them mimes knocking about. <laughs> I don't understand why people take pictures of mimes. Everyone looks like a mime in a picture. <laughs> That's so true. That's really true. If the point is, point is they're staying still, if that's their skill, a picture won't tell that story. That's that's absolutely true. <laughs> My dad took the cat to be put down today because it kept bumping into things since losing its sight. My mum said she's not going to get another one. She said the parrot is looking worried as it's seen the budgie and the cat go in the space of three months. <laughs> Your mum said the parrot's looking worried. What's the what, what what happened to the cat then? It 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 gets into a lot of fights. It lost one eye, and. Uh, then it got into another fight and lost another. Oh, and no. it was just walking around bumping into stuff. The, I mean, the vet sort of said, oh, we can do stuff to keep it alive and all that, but it's a bit out of order, isn't it? Because it costs a fortune, they shouldn't tell you. But... Mum and Dad can't afford to have eyes put on it and stuff. No, you, you can't put, have eyes put on a cat no, anyway. No, but they said, oh, we, we can do something here. We can what? Have, have its eyes sorted out. But it... W um, I don't think you should be allowed cats. Why? Not the Pilkington family. Why not? Well, they, they have good dying. lives. Yeah, I know, but they have good lives whilst they're still knocking about. It's just that we get through them. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good job you're not going to have kids. Oh, God almighty. I can't believe it. The cat that kept throwing up. So his mum shaved it. Unbelievable. Dry wipe cat. A mate sent me a story on email about a bloke in China who has this weird illness that means he can't have his picture taken. <laughs> That's not the- that's not the weird bit. If he tries, his body doesn't appear in the photo. Don't talk shit! He has had group pictures taken and everyone appeared apart from him. Don't talk shit! The that's story bollocks. had a picture next to it of a family photo and it said he was stood at the back but you couldn't see him. Right. He wasn't in the picture. He was in the picture. No, he wasn't in the picture. He's done loads of tests and stuff. No, there's- don't, I haven't done loads of tests. This is bollocks. There's no way this is scientifically possible. What's what? his want- yeah, now he's wanted. Just a white bit of paper up on the police wall. Have you seen this man? What man? If you see him, tell us. <laughs> You're talking shit. Suzanne watched the film You've Got Mail tonight for about the 14th time. I don't think you could properly fancy someone without seeing them. Unless you're blind. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's odd when blind people have affairs. Why is that odd? Just because most stuff is, is based on looks, isn't it? So you think once they've found someone, they're happy with them. Stick with them. But no, it's not true. Th no, but, I mean, most things are based on looks. What I mean is when you first, first, like, like meet someone and that. Well, then initially it's only looks, because yeah. you don't know them. So that's what I'm saying. But that's, so a, that's a ridiculous thing to say, isn't it? 
Well, no, it's just what I think. I'm not saying that that's a like, fact or anything. I'm just thinking, if you're blind, why mess about? You're still basing on it if it's only looks that yeah. you, people find. What? Yeah, I'm just saying, so why is a blind person messing about having an affair? Because I'm saying that presumably that blind person isn't basing anything on looks. I, I just, all right, I mean, maybe that's not, uh, I mean more like- Do you want me to cross it out? Should I cross it out? Well, it's, 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 <laughs> it's just the same way I think I put how, you know, people, uh, I read something in a Sunday paper once with some bloke who was going out with some woman, uh, he ended up going out with a sister who was a twin. If you're gonna have a change, have a change. <laughs> Spoke to Ricky about trips to the moon. Oh. He was up for going just to see what the world looks like. I came up with the idea of a giant mirror on the moon that would reflect the world back. He had a few questions, but <laughs> but I had the answers. Yeah. He changed the subject. I won. Right. My first question was, how would you get it up there? He said, bit by bit. <laughs> That'd be a good mirror then, wouldn't it? <laughs> I said, how big would it be? He went, you'd still need the telescope. I said, how would you get it on the right side of the moon, always facing the right? He went, what? He went, does the moon move then? I went, yes. <laughs> and if we don't like the mirror on the moon, we can always wallpaper over it. <laughs> <laughs>